Now, uh, congratulations immensely to our women's basketball team uh, and our men's basketball team, uh, Coach Payne and Coach Boyle, for what they accomplished last night. And uh, congrats to our soccer team for being selected to the NCAA tournament yesterday. That is quite an honor. Also, David Connor, offensive tackle from Atlanta, sociology students of the week, academic students of the week. Jacob Woda, am I saying that right? With uh, Woda uh, from Wisconsin Exploratory Studies, Academic Students of the Week, um, as well as Travis Hunter, honorable mention for the Fall Hornick. Travis, uh, top for game to you in history, snaps a game. Second player in FBS, to three touchdown receptions. Three receptions since Champ Bailey, which is unbelievable. Our favorite champ, Hall of Famer. Bassett has been unbelievable. Mark is uh, 17 punts inside the 20, including eight inside the 10 and three inside the five, which is unbelievable. And I think we messed up a couple more than he would have had inside the one. We'd have done our jobs right. Kid is unbelievable. Xavier Weaver, 60 reception, 783 yards, setting a new career, setting new career highs for himself. And uh, he's on pace for 1,000 yards this season, which is phenomenal. Next, uh, sometimes when you're losing like we're losing and you got to find positives to, to energize the staff, to energize the, the young men that's working their butt off to, to make it happen. So we presented some statistics to our team yesterday and I want to share them with you. 18 turnovers defensively tied for fourth in the country. Eight fumbles recovered, tied for fourth in the country. Ten interceptions, tied for seventh in the country. Twenty-three sacks, tied for twelfth in the country, and a thirty-six percent start rate in the red zone. Fourteenth uh, in the country. And offense through nine games. Um, I'm comparing this to last year at this at this particular time. Uh, I think we're averaging sixteen more points a game and almost plus eighty-six point five yards a game passing wise. It was eight touchdowns, eight interceptions at this point a year ago. Now I think with 24 touchdowns, three interceptions, plus 18, uh, 1,100 yards, almost 1,200 yards. And we like in rushing at this point last year, that 1,024, we're minus 402. So we're suffering in that aspect. But there's a tremendous amount of positives that we must lean on with these young men because they're playing their butts off. And like I reiterate today, there's no quit in them. And that's one thing that draws me closer and closer to them, and I love it. That is no quit in them. They have not shut it down. They're still fighting their butts off to the end. Let's go. Questions? Ariel? Yeah, before we get into any of the football, the, the women's team, they just took down an absolute goliath. Is it safe to say that they're coming? They're coming, and we should have played their theme music because uh, they're balling. You know, you know I'm a, a huge fan of, the, of their coach. Coach Payne, she's unbelievable just to see her do her thing and witness her practices. And uh, you get instant and constant feedback from my daughter who's there. And she called me late. I was already asleep. Um, I did. <laughs> I'm serious. I was so tired yesterday. And she just called me screaming in the phone and so happy and excited and full of joy about that accomplishment. That is huge. We cannot underestimate what they just did. That was huge for the program. It was huge for the University of Women's Basketball. Bless you. Um, hats off to them. Uh, I wish I could have been there to witness it myself, but it was a blessing. Go ahead, Mick. Hey, Coach, Coach Mick Miller, Fox 31. Uh, in the last dance, Michael Jordan talked about one of his greatest strengths was being able to take a negative and turn it into a positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you able to do that with this team at this juncture in the season? Well, everything is, well, my, my life is positive. You got to understand, I don't, I don't dwell on yesterday. Losses are hard to flush tremendously for me, though, because I'm a, a bona fide winner. Um, I'm a positive person throughout throughout anything, so I don't really dwell on it. I just, I'm a natural fixer, and I want to fix things. I want to make things work. I want to make things right. I want our fans to be pleased. I want our AD to be ecstatic, and I, and I want our kids to all go pro and be successful in some form, some, some form of fashion, and that includes winning. Coach, that's, oh, sorry, can you see about 24-7 sports? Uh, 
Um, that's the second week in a row the defense has taken a step forward. What yeah. do you think has been that switch lately? Excuse me? What do you think has been the switch to get the defense more productive? They start, just starting to understand the expectation. Um, uh, defense is always a little harder to get going than offenses. I mean, because you try to stop somebody instead of somebody, you know, it's like you, you trying to stop me from getting to that darn whiteboard and, and, and stuff. That's, that's kind of tough. When, when you are trying to, the person that's offensive usually have much more success early on. The defense is getting it. They, uh, they are understanding the scheme. They are understanding the expectation. And they, they have constant, consistent energy. Like, uh, those guys are just built different, man. I mean, I, I love it. Not that they're built different than total offense. They just, as, as, as men, as football players, they're, they're tough-nosed and tough-minded. And when we get everybody on the same page, it's going to be extraordinary. I like what I see in practice. I like what I see in the film room. Even the mistakes we make throughout the game, it's, it's one guy here and there, and we could correct that. Hey, Coach, how are you? How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. It's obvious to see how real momentum is inside yeah. of a game. Yeah. How real is it inside of the season, week to week? Um, I don't know if it's inside of a season, but it's uh, it has a lot to do with opportunity. Like when you break it down, and that's what we broke it down and, and allowed the young man to see the multitude of opportunities there were defensively and offensively. And when you break it down and show them, okay, if we'd have done that, we'd have taken advantage of the opportunity. If we'd have done that, we'd have taken advantage of the opportunity. And that was a different score. And it's a different scenario. So it's a lot of ifs after the game, but you got to show them how close they are. Hey, Coach. Hey, how you doing, sir? Good. How are you? Good. Um, this is your last chance to play in front of the fans here at Fulton Field. Mm -hmm. And what do you hope, other than a win, what do you hope to leave them with going uh, out on the final game? Um, positive hope. Positive hope that I wish you could on, uh, only understand how close we are to being what we want to be and do what we want to do. Um, like I, I, last week, I, I think I said it, we got our butts kicked once. Everything else, we had an opportunity to win. We got to learn how to win. We got to seize the moments. We got to take advantage of the opportunities presented. And we can't faint in the midst of adversity. We got to stand tall in the midst of adversity. And we're learning that. That's, that's a process that I'm truly as impatient as you are. And uh, the young men in that locker room, they're impatient as well, but they want it. I, I can't say they don't want it. They, they truly do because they have not given up. schedule we, we, we're going to play we're going to play our hardest we're going to play to win we don't care what you call it what conference you call it what we I'm serious I, I, I'm I'm speaking for my staff as well as the young men that I coach they don't care of the conferences they just want to win and play their butts off and, and prayerfully go to the NFL or be a professional in some form or fashion they don't care what package you wrap us up in I don't think a kid, I have not met a kid yet, and I've been recruiting for, uh, what is it, four years now? Three and a half, four years? I have not <clears throat> met a kid yet to say, man, you know, that Pac-12, uh, that swag, yeah, not yet. They, they're concerned with, about how much they're going to play, uh, this, not the schedule, but they want to go to the next level. They're not thinking about who they're playing against and what they're playing against and what you call it. I haven't called a recruit yet for that. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good, how are you? Nick Roberts, you sports report. When you go back and watch the film in Oregon State, you're sitting with all your coaches, Pat Shermer, Sean Lewis, and you're watching this offense. What are you saying to them and what we need to adjust moving forward? Um, we got better. We got your men. We, I don't want to say this because you guys are going to take it the wrong way. Oh, thank you, Lord, for stopping that. We did some positive things 
that you're one play away, you're one block away, you're, you're, you're one missed assignment away, you're one step too deep on a route, um, you're one drop away from, from accomplishing what you desire to accomplish. But we got to stop that. We got to have a consistency and make those plays happen instead of allow those plays to escape us. So when you're looking at film or you're gleaming from film, you're thinking about what you can do the next week. That yesterday is yesterday. What can we do now to make sure we don't miss those opportunities, practice-wise, uh, film study-wise, and preparation-wise, period. That's, that's the thought process. Hey, Coach Tyler. Hey, Coach Tyler King. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, it's obviously senior day this week, um, and a lot of the seniors are, are guys that, you know, are grad transfers that came here from other programs. Um, I don't think we have many seniors, do we? Only okay. one actual senior on the roster. That's what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just the older players that you know, this might be their last year of eligibility, how important is it to maybe recognize them for just coming here for maybe just one semester, one season, um, and kind of the impact they've had on the program, even if it is in a short time? Let me tell you who should be recognized. I mean, the seniors should be recognized great. But the darn scout team, I want to recognize them this week. I really do. I mean, I want to recognize them in some form or fashion because those kids don't receive the hand claps, don't receive the fanfare, um, not recognized uh, publicly, and they work their butts off. And the majority of them are walk-ons. Some of them are scholarship players that's, you know, young and they're trying to make their way and trying to see their way through. But they should be recognized as well. But we're going to give our seniors love and, and, and support wholeheartedly. But I don't think we have many that's going to be recognized, do we? About 15, Coach, because there's a bunch with just one. A lot of grad transfers were just one year. Got you. King and I haven't even checked those lists. I'm, I'm, I'm caught up in what we're doing right now, not who's leaving. Go ahead, Matt. Matt Smith, 104.3 The Fan. Coach, Arizona is going through the process of something like you guys are trying to embark on. They're a little right. further down the road in it. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from Jed Fish and his program, specifically lately, because they're one of the hottest teams in the conference? Yeah, first and foremost, he's a, he's a really good coach. He's a really good person. Uh, uh, I think we, we were together maybe in San Francisco or hmm. something. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to make sure. Um, I do remember his face and his name, but he, he's a uh, He's been phenomenal. His, 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 his coaching resume is, is, is suffice. I like him as a person, as a coach, as a man. Um, what he's doing with that program is phenomenal. And, and I love everything he's doing. And his kids are playing hard. They're not being penalized much. And they're playing hard and they're making the plays that they need to make. How much do you look at a program like that as you're going through this process to learn and maybe take some things from, I, try I, and I absorb really, from? I can't say I do. I, mean, I would be lying if I do. Uh, I have so many uh, people I could lean on. I mean, just having wonderful talks with guys who've been in these situations. Um, I think a couple weeks ago, talking to Coach Johnson, Jimmy Johnson, it was phenomenal. I talked to Coach Zimmer all the time, Barry Switzer. It's, it's so many guys that I could pull from, and I do. I do gravitate to them, even guys that weren't head coaches, but they had positions, not just in the NFL, but in college football, that I, I lean on that you may not even know of, but they've been there and done that. So I have a database of uh, some some lofty people that I could glean from. But he, he is definitely a guy that, that I admire and respect the heck out of what he's doing with the program. Coach Sean Keeler, the Denver Post. I have a question for you as a dad. <laughs> And as a coach, first the coach question of, uh, as far as you know and care to say, is the uh, play calling arrangement still going to be the play calling arrangement? On are offense are right? you the guy that you know? Am I the guy? I'm, I'm that guy. It's so funny that I didn't know that, but from your line of questioning, like how you how you came with it, it's like something clicked in my head and say, that's the guy. <laughs> now, I didn't even see the press conference. I just saw him laugh and, and, and say, Come on, dog. <laughs> Whatever he said. He was a good stiff arm. It was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I passed that. I passed that. Let that go, man. Just let let it go. You ain't you barking up a tree that you ain't gonna get up. That's Just right. let it go. We, we're some happy people right here. We're ecstatic. We're blessed. We're highly favored. We're 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 not where we want to be, but we we ain't where we used to be. And we're going in the right direction. So we're good. We're not that other controversy and that stuff. We don't we don't we trying to raise these kids, man. Grown folks problems, they, that don't help kids.
Speaking of race, and I've been through two divorces, and I know that for a fact. <laughs> Grown folks' problems don't help kids. As a dad, uh, I'm a great dad. So yeah, as a dad, I'm a great dad. Let's start right there. As a dad, I am balling. As a dad, I'm a Hall of Famer. As a dad, I'm a All American. As a dad, I'm a Pro Bowl. As a dad, I'm a flat out winner. As a dad, estimation mark. I'm him. As a dad who knows the NFL people that you know, uh -huh. would there be a grade or an evaluation on Shadur that would make both of you, or one of you, go, huh, maybe we should look at the next level? Maybe we why should why would we? We're having a great time here. When we appreciate and we love what we are, it's hard to look at someone else. Brian, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Brian Halpin. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, you hear a lot about teams needing to learn how to win. Yeah. And Arizona, you know, Matt's question, has kind of done that. They've gone through some of the things you've mm -hmm. had. They finally flipped the switch a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. Do you believe in that? And do you feel like your team is learning how to win through some well, of these things? Our, our team is learning how to be consistent. And when you're consistent with anything in life, you're usually successful in that. And we're learning how to be consistent in certain areas. You can see now the defense is propelling it, it itself, and they're more consistent and things that uh, they were inconsistent in early in the year. And, and, I, and I love that aspect of it. But uh, that's what winning in, in, in life is about, is being consistent. We just got to be consistent in the things that, that we desire to do well. And uh, as of right now, in some aspects of our game, we're inconsistent. A couple more. Go ahead, sir. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, Jack Carlo with the Buffalo Wire. Um, as you said earlier in the year, the goal for players and coaches is to get Two percent better every day. Yeah. But now I'm hearing the end of the season. Just what's the number one thing that you've learned about yourself as a coach? Patience. Patience. That's it. Patience. What about patience? I mean, you know, I, you guys know I ain't perfect. I, I, I chase that. And uh, patience is, is everything. I mean, when you're used to, you got to understand, man. We coming from where we came from. I don't think we lost a regular season game in two years. Then coming uh, in high school, shoot, hey, maybe one in the last four years or three years. That that's tough to, to be patient and, and understanding that this formula of winning. You got to get pieces. You got to. Um, everyone has to be all in. You got to paint the picture, and they got to understand the, the portrait that's that was painted. And you gotta you gotta all be on one accord. Last one. Go ahead, Adam. Hi, Coach Adam. Mr. Tiger. How are you doing, sir? Sports doing well. Shadour's obviously been under a lot of pressure this year. How has he continued to handle that without it, it becoming a negative? And, and what have, what's been kind of your message week to week um, as far as that goes? Shador is a, is a pro, man. He's a pro playing college football. I mean, he, he knows how to handle you all. He, he knows how to uh, take care of his academics. He, he knows how to act in public. I mean, he's, uh, he has fun with the game. When he's holding up, he's watching all that stuff, that's fun to him. He's a kid. You guys try to throw <coughs> adulthood on him. You know, don't want him to enjoy his life and his, his, his game. Um, I, he's a great – you don't know him like I know him. I'm his, I'm his dad. He's a great human being. He's a really a great young man. He's, he's good for the game. He's good for his teammates. Yeah, he's good for college football. And the way he's handled that adversity that – He's seen, he, we're in the same book. We, we've always won. So this is tremendously tough hitting this hurdle that we've hit. So I don't see him flinching. I don't see him no quit in him. I don't see no shutdown in him. He's studying and preparing just as he would any other time. The same preparation when we were winning. Um, he's getting more treatment because his body is tremendously sore. Uh, when he... He, his body is tremendously sore, I'm tremendously sore, because I know something, the things that he can do that he's doing now to make sure he can get out there and be his best. So I'm, I'm proud of the young fella, I really am. I'm proud of his brother on the other side, too, as well. I'm proud of those guys, as well as uh, all the other kids on the team. But you asked me about my son, so that's why I diverted to my sons, because some people will get the end of this, and uh, it's like, why are you talking about his kids and not the team? I, I love all my kids. Yes. Yes, come on, Ariel. Has he suffered any injuries in the past couple of games? Or is he just yeah, sore? yeah, he's suffered injuries. Of course, he suffered injuries. You think he walking like me for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> but what kinds of injuries have he suffered? He's hurt. He's hurt. You have to check with the trainers on that one. But he's he's hurt. He's hurt. But he's gonna be all right. Come come Saturday. Well, 
he, he has to get in a couple good days of practice so he can get his timing in of the new installation, new plays, and all that stuff. So he'll be he'll be okay come Saturday. With that, is there any focus to take a little pressure off of him with a little bit more oh. of the running game? Don't you think we've been trying to take <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Y'all ain't nothing crazy. Shoot, what you think we can try to do? It's so funny that you guys think it's just like, like you just go out there, hand the ball off, you just run down the field, right? We, we well, I'm just it. asking. I mean, it yeah. just seems like it would be yeah. something that So we that just want to call pass plays up, pass plays up, pass plays We don't want to run, right? Yeah, we, uh, yeah. we don't want to run. All right, thank you. We're against running. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you all. Thanks, Coach.